Wait, <laughs> we're putting our phones on silent. Hello, and welcome to another episode of What the Fluff, where we talk about stories that basically make you go WTF. Yeah. So if you have not joined us before, I am Professor Fluffy, Professor in Fluffy Magical Creatures. And just general fluffiness. <laughs> oh, <stop it. laughs> and I will be your creaky knees for this evening. Ow. <laughs> She's the school ghost, guys. <laughs> so today we're kind of rocking a very much Harry Potter theme, or we're trying to, at least. I think we have too many dragons, which is a bit of an odd phrase to say out loud. But I don't think it exists in the, the English language. No, I'm making up words now. Mm-hmm. That's how crazy we are here. Woo! But yes, as of recording, today is the 2nd of May, which is the Remembrance Day for the battle at Hogwarts. It's a very important day. And in news, why, why am I telling you like you don't know? But in the news today, uh, Twitter, uh, Twitter apologized, Rowling apologized for killing on Snape. Twitter. On Twitter. Yes, on Twitter. On Twitter. On Twitter. She apologized for killing Snape. Uh, it finally happened, guys. So many feels. Ah, uh, too so soon, much. man. Too soon. So much heartbreak. <laughs> if you're confused by our emotions right now. <laughs> <laughs> Raise your ones, guys. Um, basically, every year on this anniversary, Rowling apologizes for a character that she's murdered. And Ruthlessly. <laughs> just like my love life. Uh, and today she, <laughs> today she apologized for killing Snape. So we have a whole Harry Potter theme going. And while that does not make you go, what the fuck? I mean, our passion for it might make you go, what the fuck? But I do have a what the fuck Harry Potter fact for you, which if you're a fan of Harry Potter, you probably already know. But for those, apparently these people exist. People who don't know or like or have ever read Harry Potter. Have you been out in the world? We don't associate with them. So what's your fact? The Harry Potter fact. Give me a second. I'm very interested to hear this. You know this already. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to test my knowledge. All oh, right, see. right. Okay, so J.K. Rowling has revealed that Lily was pregnant with her second child when Voldemort killed her. Even worse, she had finally talked James into making peace with Snape and even wanted to make him the child's godfather. I swear at this point she's just making shit up. <laughs> she's an author. That's what she does. I know, but like, it's done now. <laughs> Do you have to keep stabbing me in the field? It's never done. It will All never be the time. done. It's it's a whole universe. Like I'm in Slytherin for life, yo. I know, me too. I'd really Slytherin pride. <laughs> I'd really, really love to read some books um, of the Marauders, James and Lilies and Snape's era, like. I've read some fan fiction, which surprisingly was quite good. Well, it does exist. Despite <laughs> most rare. people's misgivings. It's not all about Draco and Harry making smoochie in the Chamber of Secrets. Don't Google that. <laughs> <laughs> or do. <laughs> yeah, you. what you like is what you like. You know, I'm whatever, not, whatever. not going to judge you on that. But I am going to judge J.K. Rowling's ruthless um, mind. Because, what the fuck, man? Like... Damn, right in the feels. <laughs> it's like, woman, just give me time. <laughs> <laughs> just, I mean, just got over the oh. other trauma and now you want to, you know? Mm. I think the, the other trauma mm-hmm. was that plot twist in The Cursed Child, but let's not spoil it too much. Um, so, do you have any stories? Well, I did go to FanCon this Ooh. weekend. Which, for those of you who don't know, is basically the South African version of Comic Con. It's the Cape Town version of the Comic-Con. Cape Town version yeah. of Comic Con. Because um, Joburg has their own one, I think. Don't they? I'm not sure. I think they do have their own kind of conventions. We stand to be corrected. Stuff. Let us know in the comic comments but below. 
as of now, FanCon only takes place in Cape Town. It mm-hmm. doesn't travel to the rest of the country. So it grew out of a, a, I don't know what you would call it, a tradition or whatever, <laughs> called a Free Comic Book Day. So a comic book shop called Reader's Den. A free Comic Book Day is international. Yes. It happens all over the world on the first Saturday in May, yeah. which is always either on my birthday or <laughs> near my birthday, which is quite exciting. So um, what happens on that day is if you get to your nearest comic book shop, if they partake in this, which they should, mm-hmm. you can get a free comic. But normally they are pre-assigned as to which ones you can get. You can't just, you know, take any one that you yeah, want. Yeah, like DC and Marvel actually release yeah. comics Specific for free ones. comic book day. So basically what happened is here in Cape Town, free comic book day got so big sure. that the venue it was in which couldn't... Was a mall. <laughs> it was a mall. <laughs> couldn't hold the actual event. I remember going one year and to move you had to like shimmy the whole way there was so many people so they took that and they created fan con mm-hmm. which as i said is cape town's version of comic con and this year it's grown so much that it was now ho- held at the cape town international convention center or the ctic Yay. and we actually had some international cosplayers come down cool we had cassandra i think her name is cassandra from germany and we also had Kenpatsu, who is South Africa's biggest cosplayer. She's based in Joburg. She came down okay. as well and was really awesome. So we got some pretty cool bows and stuff. Oh, I don't have mine on. Well, I'm in the I have to. That's Frockabilly by Cherry Lisa, yo. Frockabilly. She's cool. Uh, so there's tons of like stores and artists. And there's the cosplay parade. They had the uh, junior like amateur cosplayers and then they had the professional cosplayers as well who are actually pretty freaking awesome uh, these people make their entire costumes themselves and there was a pretty cool one called hell harley um, so it's harley quinn but from hell so she had like huge horns on and she somehow like she got a pair of boots you know those boots that don't have heel they sort of just like mold into a platform so yes. they don't have a heel she turned those into hooves oh. so she looked like she had hooves and it looked freaking awesome and they had uh, international um, uh, comic writers and artists down as well mm. to talk That's about cool. their experiences working with different characters like Batman and, and all that did stuff did you go to those? yes I did <laughs> it was I'm pretty awesome daily. I mean, I was on vacay in Neisner, but I'm a little daily, you know, whatever's going to the beach, like every day, just chilling, mm. swimming every day, but cool. That's cool. <laughs> and they also had the, the Iron Throne, a full scale Yes, I've seen all those pictures. Of the Iron Throne. I am very tiny and my feet don't touch the floor when I sit in it. <laughs> So, but uh, it was squidgy. It was made out of foam. They made it out of oh, foam. Oh, smart. So. so no one could hurt themselves. Yeah. Ooh, Apparently me. last year it was so popular that it kind of fell to bits. <laughs> oh, that's so they had that to, why we didn't see it last year? That's why they had to like re, redo it, recreate it. There were some cosplays that were a bit like, what the fluff? I'm like, I don't know who you're supposed to be. And I don't know why you're in the advanced cosplaying competition because that literally looks like you put it on this morning. They were going around asking people how long it took them to make their cosplays. On average, it's about three months. Yeah. yeah. I think one of the longest ones was on and off. It took about a year mm-hmm. to make. And this one particular pair is kind of like, okay, first of all, I don't know who you are. <laughs> and second of all, are you sure? <laughs> But that's just my personal opinion. Maybe their cosplays were spot on because I didn't know who they were. That but is that is always a possibility, though. I mean, I don't know much about anime to comment, but... Yeah, that is the thing. And the one thing I did notice as well was there were a lot of superheroes walking around, like a lot of Deathstroke and Batman and stuff like that. And then, you know, they had like a little 
book, which I just thought was funny. Because <laughs> oh. it had like these really like cool dress up outfits and whatever. And then it had like a little beer belly. So I was like, okay. <laughs> Spider-Man in his later years. <laughs> the Batman sort of retired <laughs> a little bit. That's really cool. Okay. But it was very cute because I saw a mini Captain America, a mini Hulk, and a mini Iron Man. Were they all together all defending Earth? Well, maybe not defending Earth altogether, but I'm sure they met up eventually right. <laughs> to make the mini <laughs> Justice League. Avengers. Avengers? You said Hulk? Yes, they're the Avengers. Justice League's Batman and all his cronies. Okay. <laughs> This is just awkward. Right. So <laughs> one story that has truly made the world go WTF is that a girl from Florida used her boyfriend's balls as a beauty blender. Uh, I've seen this. <laughs> I haven't seen the video. No. But I, I've I, seen this blow up on YouTube. I refuse to press play on that Twitter video. I mean... Apparently it was just a joke. Yes. She wasn't, like, serious about it. But, but you can't be serious about it. See, that's another thing that's making me go, like, <laughs> WTF, is how upset people are getting about this. Like, passionately upset. And you're just like, calm. It's a joke. <laughs> like, she's that comfortable with her boyfriend that him, like, dabbing his balls on her face is not a thing. Cool for her. See it for what it is. People are not about to use their boyfriend's balls as beauty blenders. Like, calm down. But some people are just like, no. Yeah, but I think that's sort of the knee-jerk reaction of the internet. Sort of lately. Is to just, this offends me greatly. I mean, my favorite tweet though was, makeup is cancelled till y'all learn how to behave. (laughs) It's like, well done. That's pretty good. Well I think it's because people take themselves too seriously mm. and they take the world of makeup too seriously. I just, it's, yeah. But it's supposed to be fun, people. Apparently it worked, I think is the big question that we all want to know. Apparently Did it, it work? Worked. Apparently. It? She tweeted, said that it worked. Well, I could kind of see why it would if it was, you know, smooth. <laughs> you didn't have. <laughs> so explain to the... <laughs> Well, what is a beauty blender? A beauty blender is a sponge. Uh, Okay, now I really understand why it works. It's a sponge. (laughs) It sort of looks like, well, the famous one that started the whole thing, which costs too much (laughs) (laughs) for a damn sponge. (laughs) But the one that started it all kind of looks like a teardrop. Mm. And you're supposed to wet it or you can use it dry and it's supposed to like blend your foundation amazingly well mm-hmm. more better than you're using your fingers or using a brush um so it was like this revolutionary thing and the little point you're supposed to be able to use to get into like the crevices and things all the crevices <laughs> and so now a whole bunch of other stuff has come out sort of rivaling the beauty blender there have been other brands that have brought out their own thing there was the Scylla sponge which is a sponge made out of silicone and its whole selling point was is that you don't waste the product because with a sponge it obviously absorbs a lot of the product oh okay okay i understand so there's been this whole thing so obviously she's playing on this whole thing of like what else can we blend our foundation with so if you have a smoothly shaved ball sack like it has it has its own heat because foundation reacts really well to heat blends okay. really nicely like if you use your fingers that's mm. why it's really good because your fingers are warm so it would be warm yes it's yes. soft mm-hmm. and it's supple mm. so that's the science behind using balls <laughs> as a beauty blender right here on the what the fluff show you heard it here s- sort of semi lost folks <laughs> 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 since it's already kind of blown up oh uh. Right. Do you have anything else for us today, Um, creaky knees? (laughs) I was listening to a podcast the other day, and they were talking about a subject which I think is actually closer to becoming real. I think is actually real. Um, Well, now you have my curiosity. But it's closer to being an everyday reality than we actually think. And that is, 
technology oh. taking over and sort of implants becoming a thing. And I'm not talking about, you know, facial implants, breast implants. I'm talking about like microchips. No, isn't that already a thing? Yes, that's what I'm saying. It's like that's why it's going to be um, sort of in our consciousness. Because like, yes, it's a thing right now, but it's not an everyday thing. Not no. everybody has a microchip. No. That's very South African. Microchip. Microchip. <laughs> <A> microchip. <laughs> microchip. I'm just picturing a person with like an SD card slot, like <laughs> just to like stick it in there. And they were sort of discussing of it could it get to the point where it's sort of you need it to like we need cell phones. You basically you need cell phones to function in everyday life. Yes. You know? Um, Because I know at FanCon, one of the big things was is that um, a lot of the vendors use SnapScan. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's progressed to that point where you don't even really have to carry credit cards with you. You just use your phone. I mean, when I was house sitting and there was no Wi-Fi and I had no data, I felt so isolated and cut off from the world. Like, it was insane. Yeah. So it's like this everyday thing. And... I think the point where it's actually going to progress to where the technology is inside our bodies is coming sooner than we think. That's so terrifying. You know, and there was kind of... Was a Tom Cruise movie about that? A Minority Report. I don't... That one. Yes. Is that it? Our producer doesn't even know. Your (laughs) guys, our general knowledge is so on point today. Like mixing up the Justice League. (laughs) And that was all you, honey. Um, Doing great today. (laughs) Doing so well. But yes, I'm. I'm gonna say it was Minority Report. You can correct me. I'm totally open to that. But you know, with the eye, the eyeball thing, and then he like had somebody else's eyes put into his head. That's all I remember from that movie. Uh, we're getting a thumbs up from our producer but you know and there was just technology and implants and yeah so it could get to the point because uh i think amazon has sort of set up a prototype store where if you have you set up an account with them so it's almost the kind of the same concept as paypal Mm -hmm. um and literally if you have your phone on you you just walk into the store which has these sensors that look like metal detectors Uh walk into the store you just pick what you want and you walk out and now the sensors will if you have your phone with you it'll just it just deducts from from the account which obviously kind of sucks if you forget your phone because then (laughs) but also what happens if you like turn around and go back in and then does it charge you again i just there's so many loopholes to this why can't why the products can't? themselves might have um, sort of barcodes or something on them. So if they pass through mm. the detectors, then they'll. What's wrong with the system that we have right now? I don't know. You know, you get those old people who are like, I just need a phone for calling. I'm not going <laughs> to SMS. I'm going to be that old crotchety lady who will not let you micro trip me. Even if it's going to save my life, I'm going to be like, ha, take your sci-fi away from me. Which is ironic because I really like sci-fi. So, but that just sounds terrifying. It really does. And because I was thinking about it, they were debating it. And I was like, but we have microchips already. You know, people have those implanted all the time. And it could get to the point where you don't have an ID card anymore. You have a microchip. And then people can like scan you. Well, I mean, it'll, into a database. it'll help identify, like, missing people and dead bodies a lot easier, I suppose. That's true. But uh, do we have to go straight to, you're dead, you need so- a microchip? <laughs> 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 what? The only good thing is if you die, people will know who you are. <laughs> Okay, I was kind of thinking about how we get our pets microchipped so that if they get lost, you can take them. Like, if you find a lost animal, you take it to the vet to then see if it's been chipped. So now I'm thinking if you find, like, a lost child 
or a dead person. <laughs> just pull out your scanner. And you <laughs> just can, like, you know, beep. app on your phone and just check out who they are. I don't know. Well, we have barcode scanners apps on our phone. Exactly. So you could just be like, who are you? Beep. <laughs> that could be awkward though. If you're like talking to somebody and they're sort of like bothering you and you're kind of like, dude, leave me alone or whatever. And then they're just like, beep, got your name. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that wouldn't work. And like, how would you, how, how, like, it wouldn't you would have no privacy yeah it's terrifying because then if somebody could hack your microchip exactly well i mean hacking your facebook okay let's face it some people make it really easy but like hacking your facebook the word password is not a password <laughs> <laughs> so okay that's freaked me out. So that was kind of my what the fluff thing is the fact that we think about it as sci-fi as in like the year 2035. Meanwhile, the year 2035. I'm going to be 35. Not, is not that far away. I'm No, I'm going to be 45. Math. <laughs> I'm going to be 45. No, that's so far away. <laughs> <laughs> Can't even think that far. Yeah, Lord. It's, it's not that far away. I mean, there are already some sci-fi movies when they're like the year 2020 and we're like, well, we're coming up to it and I'm still not living in space. We better hurry this up. And everyone was so upset when we didn't have hoverboards. Right? <laughs> or real hoverboards. Right? Oh, uh, science. Well, going Apparently along... Apparently our fashion sense is completely off. So going along science, I guess, because I was going to talk about how this uh, guy in Joburg is try has been accused of trying to commit a coup by asking his friends and colleagues for money so that he can assassinate our president. Have you not heard of that? Go one? on. Oh, okay. I was going to talk about bananas, but okay. So a man has been arrested. I mean, this was a while ago now, but a 23-year-old man was arrested in Midran for allegedly plotting to assassinate officials perceived as state capture beneficiaries. So basically... This guy is asking people to donate money so that he can now take out members of our cabinet and our president. And does he have a GoFundMe? Pretty much. Like, he's written various letters to selected companies to donate money. He needed 140 million in total. Um, I think he wants sort of maybe a small arsenal. Yeah. I. (laughs) <laughs> tank um so yeah so basically the court proceedings is going is happening right now as we're filming this and they be- they like want him to go for mental what's the word evaluation evaluation but like all his neighbors and his like parents and stuff are just like he's not crazy like he's super likable and friendly and like is so on top of politics and that just makes me think of every story you've ever heard about like a psycho's neighbors where they're like oh he was such a great guy and he let me his lawn mow when actually he has like 20 people buried in the basement so you know like disturbia <laughs> oh it's such a good movie um <laughs> so he was targeting 19 individuals and they released the list in court Damn. and they want him to go for mental health evaluations and they're just like can we call this a coup if it was just him working alone is it not just attempted murder because the guy was captured by the hawks so you know it's legit and you just I, like the story's been carrying out on the news and every time there's more details about it and i'm just like what the fuck this is strange like it's it's the weirdest case i've ever followed you know it is pretty strange it's bizarre (laughs) i mean i've I've heard of people disagreeing with the government but you know starting a gofundme to get rid of them i think it would cost less for you to just start a whole new political party god millennials (laughs) (laughs) oh my god he is a millennial (laughs) he's 23 it's it's all our problems it's all our fault i mean just a millennial to be like go fund me (laughs) subscribe to my patreon (laughs) i just i love that he was writing letters to like companies dear sir (laughs) to whom it may concern i mean one of his colleagues at like anglo-saxon um no anglo-gold yes that one (laughs) 
Ugh. And he like wrote, he asked this guy for like 40 mil. For 40? Yeah, cash. Soup's cash. Cash. He's going to need a dump truck. <laughs> no, cash as in casual. Oh, casually. I'm like, 40 million cash? That doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> and I need it by Friday? Yeah, no. That, Can that's I have it in like work. tens? <laughs> So, my banana story, because for some, I honestly thought that... And we're back. (laughs) Camera was not recording. Right. So, about my story about bananas. So, tell me again, because I have not heard this one. So sassy, guys. Before. So sassy. So, I was road tripping with my bestie, and we were... You know how it is when you're road tripping, you always end up talking about everything. And that and I spy. We don't actually, we didn't play I spy. Was it you who didn't know what a crash barrier was? You know it was me who didn't know what a crash barrier. <laughs> Anyways, bananas. So we were talking about how things that are flavored banana don't taste like actual bananas. It's like whoever invented it had like a vague idea about what a banana tasted like and kind of just ran in the opposite direction <laughs> so, <laughs> this is a banana <laughs> so i'll make it taste like nothing like a banana <laughs> it's like a cartoon villain's idea of what a banana would taste like it's such an odd that's like thing doofenshmirtz yeah, exactly. <laughs> something he <Yeah>. would do <laughs> a cartoon villain so <laughs> so she was telling me that artificial banana flavor is based on a banana that nearly went extinct and that's why the two taste different to what we eat now and people have actually like done research into this and like even the bbc got involved like looking into this like it's a whole thing and apparently um it's a myth but that there was an extinct ban- no 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 that but ba- artificial banana flavor is based on this one type of banana that nearly went extinct well i could have told you that <laughs> but but here for me is the interesting slightly what the fluff story is that people think that the banana flavoring is based on the grass michelle banana and the bananas that we eat are called the cavendish right Right? So the um, artificial banana in the grocery store variety is supposedly due to the flavoring being based on the now unavailable grass Michelle. But there is a guy um, in Hawaii, he's a banana farmer, and he suggests that the grass Michelle banana does actually taste very similar or is tastes exactly the same as banana flavoring. He produces 35 different variants of bananas wow yeah i feel really stupid right now (laughs) but i only thought there was one kind of banana i mean you get a variety of apples why wouldn't you get a variety of bananas i mean but like first world problems (laughs) it's like what kind of banana do you eat the one that comes in the packet (laughs) that kind so so who knew that you get, I mean, even if it is 35 different variants of bananas, I kind of want to be like, okay, hang on. If he's a banana farmer, like he says he is, is he maybe not just playing around on his banana farm? That sounds wrong. <laughs> <laughs> on his Hawaiian banana farm. Guys, if you get an email <laughs> from a Hawaiian banana farmer, don't trust it. Yeah. All by himself. Okay, but ask your question because I might actually be able to answer. Is this. he not maybe just playing the evil, mad, maybe not necessarily a genius scientist and just goofing around? No. With his bananas. Because a biochemical analysis done by scientists says that the Grass Michelle banana actually tastes fake like the flavorings so basically how they get artificial flavorings is that they break down the food like chemically i'm paraphrasing so hard here guys like (laughs) so technically if you eat something that's banana flavored 
You're actually eating a banana. Uh, uh, <laughs> you know what? Not wrong, but mm, not entirely not true. Yeah. <laughs> so just to conclude, the Gras Michelle banana um, has the same biochemical profile with the idea of a more monotonous, less complicated flavor. Yeah. The idea? That's what that's what this very like scientific article says. I'll have to visit this banana farm. <laughs> Ooh, what the fluff in Hawaii. Let's go. Hell yeah, we might not make it to the banana farm though. We're <laughs> just being like <laughs> On the beach. On Aloha. The beach. <laughs> So, yeah. <laughs> four, 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 four. Fuck you, science. I never thought the day before my birthday I'd be talking about banana farms. Banana farm. A so farm of bananas. We've gone from Harry Potter to banana farms here on the What the Fluff A show. A microchipped banana farm. In the next Harry Potter movie. Full of dragons. <laughs> <laughs> and with that mental image, we say goodnight. You have been watching the What the Fluff Show. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Twitter and like us on Facebook. It's all What the Fluff Show. Links are all below. Goodbye. Bye.